Welcome to DYS MMA Boxing. Gennady Golovkin is set to face Daniel Jacobs. This is a fight where we're finally going to have one WBA middleweight champion. And I believe it's going to end in a knockout. I think Daniel Jacobs has to take the fight to Triple G opposed to going to the ropes or um, basically moving away from him. I think Daniel Jacobs fights best when he's coming forward and he's the aggressive fighter. That's why I believe that in order for him to do so, he has to do so. Being smart, though, he cannot um, he cannot be over-aggressive and be sloppy when he's getting hit with hard shots himself. He has to be the one to um, take the fight to Triple G. When he's the one going to the back of the ropes, he's the one taking clean shots. There are fighters that are really good at backing up. He's not one of those people. If he finds himself on the rope, I can easily see uh, Triple G landing these really beautiful body punches and wearing him down. If that happens, I don't see the fight lasting too too long. It's not inconceivable to believe that um, he can't push Triple G back or make Triple G get off of him. It's been done before in the past. So these keys are not something that are like requiring him to have superhuman strength. He just needs to have power. I don't know how much power he has, but we're going to find out in this fight. In the Prog fight, he had... 10 first round knockouts, but when they got in the ring, it was hard for him to re get Prague to respect him. Prague ate his punches like it was nothing, and it was Jacobs the one who was buckling under the punches and the pressure of Prague. Um, a lot of people think that Triple G can't be hurt as if he's, you know, superhuman. He's a man just like everyone else, just like Jacobs. In this fight against Willie Monroe Jr., he had... Um, went out into the, he, he pretty much, it was a tough fight, it was a tough round, and he was visibly shaking up in his corner. But the thing that makes Triple G a champion is that he's able to suck it up and put on his poker face and get back out there and do his thing. This all determines if Daniel Jacobs has crouching power. He has to stay off the ropes. Like I said, he has a tendency of going to the ropes. Okay. Based upon, you know, if Sergio Moore is able to push him back with a jab, it's it's going to be, you know, he's going to have to do something. <laughs> he's going to have to use his legs. He's going to have to use his counters. Um, he's going to try to, he's going to do the best he can to not allow Triple G to push him back. But he has a tendency of going back to the ropes just because I believe sometimes he doesn't feel like he has the punching power when he gets in there or he doesn't like to be pressured. And, you know, he's going to have to get over that because... I believe in taking away everything and giving them nothing. Triple G is very comfortable coming forward. You don't want to be in discomfort and have Triple G being comfortable. When Daniel Jacobs on the ropes, he takes easy shots. He takes shots to the head. He takes shots to the body. It's not his strong suit. And therefore, um, I believe he has to resist the urge of going to the back of the ropes. Now, there are things that he does very well. For example... When he is on the ropes, sometimes he does do a good job using his legs and not allowing his opponents to set and um, to uh, hit him with hard strikes. Sometimes the best thing to do when you're on the ropes is just to fight off the ropes. And like I said, these things Daniel Jacobs has in his arsenal, so I'm not pulling something from someone else's arsenal. These are something that he has done that I have seen that other fighters were successful in doing against Triple G. Um, in this fight here... Not only was Kell Brook able to push him back like Curtis Stevens did, he's also able to um, become aggressive against Triple G. The jab is also a good weapon to use to get off the ropes. Um, a lot of times when you're jabbing and you're moving with it, it's, it's just a beautiful sight to see and it's good boxing in my opinion. Jabbing plus moving equals good boxing. And you don't have to necessarily run. You just realize that um, I'm in a bad position. Let me get out the way. Now, clinching. Check this out. Clinching is a good way of turning your opponent around and taking advantage of the position. And no one does it better than um, Kell Brook, though. Kell Brook. Now, Kell Brook took, he clinched and turned Triple G around. And when he was able to turn him around, he knew that Triple G's back is the rope. And that's when he decided that he was going to land very powerful strikes and, and take advantage. He seized the moment of opportunity, basically.
Daniel Jacobs has to be very creative in keeping Triple G off of him. I believe he also needs to stick to the basics, stick to his jab, and use his legs. I think that um, as long as he does that, he'll keep he'll make it very difficult for Triple G to set his feet. In order for Triple G to land those nice, hard, powerful strikes or those combinations, he has to have his feet planted. And as long as you are, are, are moving and you're not allowing him to, to strike, you know, you got a good chance of, uh, of, of staying alive, if not winning the fight. Let's be honest with you. Let's be honest. Triple G is there to be hit. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. He's there to be hit. He's got a granite chin, but he's there to be hit. And as long as Daniel Jacob is first and not allowing Triple G to feed the set, and what I mean by being first is striking first, but at the same time, he is initiating the movement. So as he strikes, he's already, he's already on the move. He's already moving out the way. And if he's able to do that, then he's able to keep Triple G off of him. Um, but then again, like I said, everything depends on his punching power. If he doesn't have punch of power, Triple G will not respect him. A lot of people go to the Kell Brook fight as if, oh, this is the formula to beat Triple G. They don't realize that Triple G has several different gears that people haven't even tapped into yet. When he, when the, his opponent has punching power, he respects them. When they don't, he's coming through them like a Mack truck. And if you sit around and you're not moving your head and you're standing still, then he lands these powerful strikes that will knock you out. This is something that um, Daniel Jacobs has to avoid doing. I've noticed he does keep his head straight sometime, and he doesn't move his head, and he doesn't move his feet. That's going to get him in a bad spot against Triple G. Now, his chin is always being talked about. In the Prague fight, he was 23 years old. Prague was 30. He was a veteran in the game. It was a fight probably they shouldn't have done, and he got hit with a switch punch. That punch would have knocked anyone out. It basically switched his stance twice, but he has so much leverage on that punch that that's what pretty much caused um, the knockout. He's only been knocked out twice in his career, and him getting hit with that switch punch again is highly unlikely. Sergio Moore tried to do it. It didn't work. Um, sir, when he fought Sergio Moore, his hands was down, and he made a, he made a, a, a huge error. Um, being over aggressive, like I said, and who knows that maybe that punch could have knocked anyone out. You know, you're you're running at someone at full speed with your hands down. You know, these are professional athletes, but um, he's gonna have to do a, a lot better job against Triple G. Can be getting sloppy. Now, you guys probably wondering, what about Triple G? What about Triple G? I hear about Daniel Jacobs. Listen, this is Triple G here. <laughs> this is this man is a machine. He's a, a human wrecking ball. His What he needs to do is he's not Sergio Moore, first of all. Let's get that straight. He's not Sergio Moore, and he's the type of person that will make you reevaluate your life while you're in the ring. He disfigures people while they're in the ring, and he's just a, a he's undefeated. He hasn't been knocked down, and what he's going to do, his game plan is already set. He's going to come in there. He's going to use his jab. He's going to use his good skills. He's going to use his body punches. He's going to come forward. And he's just coming there to do one thing only, to kill, steal, and destroy. <laughs> he's coming to wreck your life. And there's nothing else to say about it other than, you know, to be fair and say, what can Daniel Jacobs do to win it? I don't want to count any man out because I believe it's possible for anyone to lose. These are a high, highly skilled athlete. Now, as far as Triple G's speed, I think he has underrated speed. A lot of people think he's 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 um, not fast, and Dan Jacobs is going to have his, have speed advantage. I highly doubt that. I think they're going to be the same. Um, but like I said, this is going to be a highly skilled fight. Both guys love to win, and it's going to be a lot of excitement, and it's going to be a lot of disappointments. This is D-Rod's MMA Unboxing. If you found this breakdown valuable to you, Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You'll get more of these. Hit the like button. Leave a comment at the bottom. Tell me what you think. Peace out. You with in the middle rounds?
No, not serious. Just after knockdown. Mamma mia!